All right, our job for today is taking this old carrier heat pump, taking it out of the closet it was in, opening up the closet, and making it into a zone system. Uh, this carrier Tech 2000 system has been in service since '99. Good system. Uh, I know there's a lot of fans of carrier out there, and that's for a reason. They're really good. And we're going to take these zone taps, which is that's the tap for upstairs. Actually, this was, but we're going to create this one. And this one downstairs went to in between the trusses, and that's going to be our downstairs zone. Because before, downstairs was way too hot. Uh, didn't get enough air. Uh, so we're going to put a control down there and put the zone dampers in. Uh, static bypass, electronic, and all the good stuff. Uh, programmable stats. So we're going to have a lot better temperature control and humidity control in this house. Because that's what the problem was. It's awful humid downstairs. It's at the beach. Uh, everybody knows how awful that can be. And despite it being at the beach, that condenser looks pretty good after 11 years. Uh, carrier knows what they're doing. So we're going to get to it, and you'll see how it goes. All right, this is the bottom of our closet here. I used the skill saw that opened up a little square hole here to take a look down there. I was pretty sure it was clear, but I wanted to open up a small hole before I opened it up the full size. I haven't decided what kind of duct I'm going to put here. It's either going to be a 10-inch round or maybe a 10 by 8 uh, rectangular, depending on how uh, it lines up with the drain pan. went ahead and cut the moldings off over here with the old Harbor Freight a little oscillating tool which is fantastic uh, same thing over here cut these moldings off so the drain pan can slide as far back as possible because uh, basically there's a finite amount of space you know you got your supply plenum on there the old one which I'm going to cap off and use that as the entrance to the supply plenum uh, since we got two zones here I want to even it out a little bit whereas before one zone uh, was getting all the air and this little branch zone coming back down wasn't getting anything. Uh, and there's our little branch zone. I looked inside and it's an old pressure plenum line box with four run outs on it. Looks like the plenum's still good so I'm going to use that. And uh, that's sort of where we're at right now. We're going to keep chopping away at this thing but I think we got the layout sort of uh, ironed out. Alright, here's day two of the zone install. One of the zone dampers is actually mounted up there. XCI power open, power closed, 24 volt damper. Uh, we have our carrier air handler sitting on a uh, base box, uh, filter grill down here, we have another ducted return downstairs for the other zone. So our line's going to reconnect right there. This is how it looks. We blocked off the old access and put a metal panel underneath that one to seal off the duct, put some insulation in there, put another metal panel up in the ceiling for our breaker. So we're going to add a piece of ductwork that's going to run basically a thin piece running right across here. We're going to have this duct here, we're going to have another duct coming off the bottom, and the bypass duct coming off the bottom as well. Alright, we got our new duct work on top of the unit. Sort of a little lateral piece. Thought we could fit in there. We got our two zone dampers in going up and down. And we'll connect that one down here to the supply plenum for the first floor. Short one of duct, and the bypass duct will come off here. Go down there and run around into the return, and I have a little box right here. These two will mate together. And after that, uh, most of the duct work will be done except for the stuff down in the garage, which I'll probably do tomorrow. All right, here we are. The next step here, I got this metal elbow here, 10 inch round. It's going to be the bypass damper, uh, the duct. It's going to flow down to the bottom of the room and go over to this return box here, mixing box uh, for the return downstairs and for the bypass damper. As I said before, there's a supply. Here's our zone damper motors. Uh, things are coming right along. Uh, pretty soon I'll have it all piped up. Then tomorrow I'll probably work on uh, <coughs> the return downstairs, setting a new thermostat downstairs, uh, wiring up the zone panel and pulling the vacuum on the line set and releasing the charge back into the line set. But uh, I'm about done for today. I'll probably pipe this up and head on home. Alright, this is day three here. I've uh, brazed in the new joints. Got myself a filter dryer there in front of the uh, TXV. I uh, always do them, or I try to do them upright. Uh, because no matter what happens to the charge of the unit and things like that, they tend to feel and filter uh, more efficiently if they're upright because the liquid's forced to fill the filter dryer instead of running along the bottom side of it it's, if it's lateral. Uh, here is the zone panel, uh, EcoJ panel. Uh, got four zone capability. I'm only going to be using two of them here unless they split up the downstairs eventually. So that's what we got here. We got the damper controls here. Each one of those will have a three wire running to the power open close dampers. Uh, these are the relays 
for uh, these switches up here. You go to the air handler to send the signals for things like the compressor and things like that. Uh, the thermostat terminals are over here like I was saying. Over here is a link that goes to another panel if you have more than four zones. Here's your 24 volts in for the transformer. Uh, a bunch of dip switches here that sets the type of panel, gas, electric, things like that. And right here is your leaving air sensor which we will take into the side of the air handler somewhere around in here. Uh, in between the coil and blower to get a general temperature uh, that the coil is putting out. And if it gets too low or too high this uh, panel will shut it down. So uh, that's where we're at. Uh, we're going to keep going and uh, catch up with you later. Alright, we got our zone system all wired up. Uh, trying to get down here in this closet and then head downstairs to do that little return ducting in the garage. Uh, we've got plenty of wires here. And all these i got to strap up too. A couple clamps. This right here is a static pressure switch. And what it does is sense the static pressure in the bypass duct, which recycles air that's not being used because of a closed damper. One of the systems is offline or one of the floors is offline, so it recycles that air back to the air handler. And this sort of regulates how much static pressure builds up in that duct. It'll open and shut the damper to compensate for whatever setting that you have selected. Uh, typically you run both dampers, both zone dampers open, turning on the zones, and then you'll make this bypass damper just barely shut. So when one of these zones closes off, the bypass damper, which is here, will start to open back up a little bit to compensate for the static pressure. That's how that works. Uh, we add a transformer in here. What do you see right here? It's 40 VA, which stands for 40 watts. It's volt amps. Uh, you can multiply volts by amps to get watts. That's how they were those. So I add this one to power. Basically, what we have here is one, two, three, four damper slots. We're using two of them. Uh, so it powers those two dampers opening and shutting. And these are a lot easier to power than spring dampers. All right, now we're downstairs, and this is the return opening I'm going to use. It's a 14 by 14 here, because all we have in here is a little bedroom and a little sitting area. And the sitting area is actually located underneath a porch, so there's no air ducts in there, which was a problem to begin with. But we didn't want to go as radical as making a mini split, so we're going to try to see how cool we can keep it and then go from there. We might tear up a ceiling later, but uh, we're kind of going to wait on that and see how bad it is. Uh, there's a return opening. There was no return air down here before. It kind of the old unit was on a standalone box with just iron angle that was bent and sat on top of it, so it was kind of freestanding. Uh, so what I'm going to do, some of my tools, is go into the garage and add a return. It comes from upstairs, heads over there to that box in the other room. The idea is to get some of that air moving because this is some hot, humid air. Because this is right on the beach or a waterway. So uh, I'm going to try to get some of that hot humid air out of there. Keep that air moving so it can uh, dehumidify with that new zone system. So that's the idea. There's our thermostat wire dangling down there for our thermostat here on the first floor. Then I will be done and starting this bad boy up. Well, there's my return duct. It's all done. Went ahead and fabricated a box for the wall and insulated everything, stuffing up in the cracks up there so no air gets through there. And that's it for right there. The zone system's online. We'll take a look at that next. All right, here's our zone panel in action. As you see, this temperature up here is 60. That is the supply air temperature. Uh, of course, there's a two thermostats. You see some uh, LEDs right there. Uh, you see red ones at top. That's 24 volts of power to each thermostat. You'll see a yellow one next to the Y. That's the compressor circuit. The little green one next to the G is the uh, fan circuit. And the one down at the bottom, O slash B is reversing valve. It's going to be O on most machines. Uh, B on a few different brands. Uh, that's the uh, supply air sensor, or uh, should I say the coil sensor, telling the temperature of the air leaving the coil. Uh, this down here is just a status light when it's blinking, it's normal. Uh, if you see it off or solid, it indicates a problem. Uh, this goes to the air handler right here, same sort of lights. Uh, it has second stage lights which don't apply to this uh, particular system, but on some systems you'll have two stages of compressor. So everything else turned out great. That is the static pressure switch. It takes a static pressure reading from this tube here and operates this damper here accordingly. So there's our other damper up there. One down there. Our condensate pump's been running because there's been a lot of water in the air in this house, I'm sure. There's our lawn dryer. So everything turned out good. 
Uh, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I went up to put the last 14 by 14 stamp face grill up on the return downstairs and I had bought a 12 by 12. That's disheartening since it's about 6.30 at night. But uh, I think I'll run down to Lowe's. They should have a stamp face. I think they can handle that one. But that's about it for today. Uh, see you guys on the next one.